we're going to be talking about the regression line. But before I do that, I want to talk just about equations of lines in general here. Um, so this is something you probably learned in Algebra 1. And you don't have to worry too much because I'm not, we're not going to be doing a lot of graphing lines or anything like that. Um, but we do need to have some basic understanding of the equation of a line. So what you probably remember is y equals mx plus b. Okay, where m is the slope of the line. Okay, and then 0b um, is the y-intercept of the line. And we're going to see in a minute that we're going to label these things a little bit differently. Um, but first, let me just show you a couple examples here. So you might have a line that's like this. Y equals, let's just say, negative um, uh, 3 halves X, we'll say, plus 4. So this is a line here and the m here is negative three halves and four is um, zero four would be the y-intercept so the idea of how this works here is let me make a, an axis So this is an XY coordinate system. So this is the X coordinate, or the X axis. This is the Y axis. And um, any ordered pair X and Y that satisfy this equation are going to lie along some line. And that, and that line is going to be the line for this equation. And this is, equation is the equation for that line. Okay, so in other words, the, the line is the set of ordered pairs that satisfy this equation. And it's pretty easy to graph these. So in this case, m is negative 3 halves, and that's the slope. And then 0, 4 is, is the y-intercept here. Okay, so you start with this y-intercept. So 0, 4 would be right here. So in other words, this 4 here shows you where on the axis you're going to start, okay? So the line's going to pass through this point, through the y-intercept. And now the question is, how is it tilted? Like, is it horizontal? Is it sloping upward? Is it sloping downward? The negative sign here means that the slope is downward. So the line is sloping downward. And then the line here actually gives you the slope, and you use the the memory aid rise over run so the top number is the vertical change the bottom number is the horizontal change so you, this would be you go down three for every two you go over and then you would get another point on that line and then I could go down three for two that I go over and I'd get another point on the line and you would keep doing that down three over two down three over two and if you keep doing that all these points are going to be lined up and that's going to be the equation of the line. Okay, so that's the line y equals negative 3 halves x plus 4. So the 4 is where it starts on the y-axis, where it crosses the y-axis. And then the negative 3 halves is the slope here. And how else are you going to tell how a line is tilted? the slope of the line unless you tell how much it goes up or down for every amount that it goes over. Okay, that's just the way that you refer to a slope. So let's do one more. So let's say I have something like y equals negative 2x or I'm, I'm sorry, I wanted a positive slope this time. y equals 2x we'll say minus 3. So in this case, my m is going to be 2. And then if there's just a number by itself, then you can put 2 over 1. And this means you're going up 2 for every 1 you go over. Up 2 for every 1 you go over. Okay, So 2 over 1 is just equal to 2. And then my y-intercept 
concept is zero negative three. So in other words, you're taking the sign in front of the number. So the slope is always the number that's connected to the x, and then the number by itself is the y-intercept. And so then to graph this, To graph this, um, your slope is negative 3, so 0, negative 3, it would be like right here. And then what this says is you're going to go up 2 for every 1 you go over, then you'll get another point. Up 2 for every 1 I go over, another point. Up 2 for every 1 I go over, another point. Up 2 for every 1 I go over. And you see that all these lie on the same line and that would be the line y equals 2x minus 3. Okay, so if it's a negative slope, it's going downward. If it's a positive slope, it's going upward. The bigger the slope, like if this were 10 instead of 2, then it would mean that I'd be going up 10 for every 1 I go over, up 10 for every 1 I go over, and that line would have a bigger slope. I mean, it would be more steep, right? So, um if it were, let's say the slope were one half, then that would mean I would go up one for every two I go over, up one for every two I go over, and the slope would be less steep. Or if it were one tenth, it would mean I would go up one for every ten I go over, up one for every ten I go over. And again, it would go up even more gradually. Okay? So a line is determined by the slope, which is the number on the x, and then the y-intercept. The y-intercept just tells you where it crosses the axis, and then the slope tells you how it's tilted. Okay. Now, we're going to learn the line of best fit. So given a set of ordered pairs, we're going to be able to determine the line that actually fits the data the best with the least amount of error. And um, we're basically going to have a formula that will give us, we'll have two different formulas, one that will give us the slope and the other one that's going to give us the y-intercept. Okay. Now, the thing is, in statistics, we don't label it y equals mx plus b. Okay, so uh, traditionally, you label this y equals a plus bx. And so that's a little confusing, okay? First of all, it's not mx plus b, it's a plus bx. So the slope here, in this case, is equal to b, okay, where b here was made up the y-intercept, right? And then 0a is the y-intercept, okay? So we're going to have a formula to give us a and b, okay? And then we're going to be able to put it in the line in this equation and then we're going to have the the equation for the regression line and that's going to be the line that fits the data the best so that is what we're going to look at next how to calculate that regression line